the reduction of iron ore in blast furnace. So, this figure shows the various uh, reaction which are occurring in the blast furnace as we as you know there are various regions the throat uh, uh, region as we said um, throat, re throat region, steak region, belly region, bows and heart. So, now we would be talking one by one about this what sort of reaction that occurs. So, this is actually so distant from the tubular level. So, we are talking where the combustion occurs and this is uh, from uh, at the top from where the charge is um, material is getting charged. So, this is the top region the steak region. So, in this region gas temperature uh, top gas temperature is 250, but really it is uh, going somewhere uh, from 7800 uh, to uh, 250. So, this uh, region most of the um, your water get evaporated. So, free moisture and uh, chemically bonded moisture get evaporated and some of the reactions we, um, we will uh, you will see in the other slide. So, mostly Fe 2 O 3 um, uh, or hematite reduced to magnetite in this region and then magnetite to FeO uh, this is sort of an inactive zone in between and this indirect reduction takes place FeO with CO the reducing cases which uh, are coming out from here which is CO mostly which gives a uh, reduced FeO ion oxide into iron and CO2 though we have put uh, in terms of FeO but stoichiometrically is not the correct com, uh, representation of iron oxide. Uh, oxygen contains vary from 0.95 to 1.05. So, usually you write it FeOx. So, the zones in the blast furnace can be divided upper zones, middle zones, this is a middle zone and this is the lower zone where uh, direct reduction of carbon is taking place. We will uh, describe this uh, on the next slide. So, these phenomena uh, which we described in the previous one this occurred almost three fifth height of the blast furnace from the throat region. So, most of the indirect uh, reduction and uh, um, in fact the decomposition of carbonate except the calcium carbonate the magnesium and other carbonate this occurs uh, in this region and this height if you will look at almost the three fifth of the blast furnace where the all these phenomena are occurring. So, till end of the steak region the diameter of the furnace keeps on uh, increasing to accommodate the expansion of gases and swelling of the charged material. Uh, fusion and contraction of slag and metal start in the valley region as we discussed before and melting of slag and metal occur in the boss region. Most of the direct reduction reaction occur in this region which are endothermic. So, as you can see these are the uh, reaction which are occurring in this and all of them actually are endothermic as such. So, tears are located about 50 centimeter below the upper rim of the heart as we uh, I mentioned during the uh, design of the blast furnace that uh, tear location is about 50 centimeter below the upper rim of the heart. So, along the periphery where combustion of coke occurs, metal and slag tap hole are located about 1 and 2 meter away from the heart bottom. So, if we now look at the uh, various uh, zones in the blast furnace in terms of uh, reaction, what we will see in the first one in the uh, upper zone which is known as also the preheating zone. So, vaporization of free water and water of crystallization that is the chemically bonded water uh, that occurs uh, usually this is around 100, 150 and this can go up to 400 degree Celsius. Then decomposition of carbonate occur other than calcium carbonate because that uh, occurs at uh, higher temperature 
um, so mostly magnesium carbonate or other uh, magnesium carbonate these occur in this region. Um, <coughs> even if you have a carbonate iron ore uh, that also occurs in this region. So, carbon deposition reaction can occur in this region um, where CO decomposes into CO2 plus C and gives that car, uh, carbon. So, that uh, carbon deposition reaction what called solution loss reaction is also occurred in this region and partial or complete reduction of hematite hematite to magnetite or bustite. So, some bustite also get redu reduced from hematite to uh, bustite. Bustite is uh, again FeOx. So, because the stoichiometry uh, oxygen content is different, uh, but it goes into, into the series it reduced by hematite then magnetite and then uh, bustite. So, in the sequential form. So, again in the upper zone uh, where as I said the temperatures go up to 800 or so. Um, so, the, the sort of a utilization of carbon monoxide or in terms of percentage of uh, carbon monoxide efficiency um, this is 100 percent is called the first from magnetite uh, from hematite to magnetite um, in this region up to 873 means about 600 degree Celsius and then uh, magnetite to FeO at uh, efficiency is about 80 percent of CO utilization um, and this uh, reaction um, a little bit it occurs in the steak region actually um, a middle one not that much uh, into the upper, upper zone but some amount can occur which uh, has a 30 percent uh, CO utilization. And as uh, we said the solution lo uh, loss reaction or Boudard reaction it is sometimes known as uh, occurs in this region. The efficiency when we talked about the um, CO it is uh, given by this percentage of CO2 divided by total percentage of CO plus CO2 in the gas 100. So, first three reaction are known as the indirect re reduction of iron oxide as you can see indirectly it is reducing through the gas. And the middle zone reaction um, the main reaction again uh, some magnetite uh, to bustite it reduces and from bustite to iron. So, most of the iron get reduced in this region, but not all uh, maybe up to 70 percent or so and the calcium carbonate decomposes in this region and this CO2 react with the carbon uh, and form CO again. And even the whatever some moisture is there that also react with the CO and keep CO2 and hydrogen and as you know hydrogen is a much better reductant than CO. So, reducibility of the gas increases by this uh, hydrogen. So, this reaction is also known as the water shift reaction. So, these sort of the reactions occur in the uh, middle zone and in the lower zone of the blast furnace um, we have uh, um, these reaction these all reaction are endothermic first. So, calcium carbonate decomposition whatever is left uh, uh, from the middle zone it decomposes in the lower zone which has a very high temperature range 1500 or so and direct reduction of uh, um, car, uh, FeO occurs in this region. So, as you can see with solid carbon FeO is getting converted into Fe. Even SiO2 reduction occurs in this and the silicon vapors can form and this is the one which contributes toward the high met silicon in metals um, and uh, it get uh, absorbed by the liquid ion. 
um, manganese get reduced manganese oxide get reduced into manganese. Um, similarly, phosphorus uh, pentoxide get reduced to phosphorus. Again, if there is a sulphur uh, associated with iron, it goes uh, with a lime and form calcium sulphide and iron get reduced in that and the combustion it said occurs in this region also and that this is the oxidation you can see it. and as it leaves the um, raceway region it reacts with the remaining co carbon and form the CO. So, this is the only reaction which is exothermic and produce quite a lot of heat, but when it reacts with excess carbon CO2 plus C equal to 2 CO that is again an endothermic reaction. So, one has to see the net heat what is released from that reaction. And so, coming to the another part of the, so before anyway coming to the day section of this. So, th these are the main important reaction which are taking place and uh, one has to be very uh, careful especially with the silicon pickup this reaction and this is very important uh, uh, reaction in the blast furnace mostly what you need you need a uh, less silicon in the hot metal otherwise it leads to desiliconization and other um, uh, uh, operation after the metal is tapped. So, that is again an expensive one and it is uh, uh, sort of increase the cost of the steel, um, but these are the few reaction which we will discuss in detail similarly about the phosphorus and sulphur at the later stage and how do they affect the chemistry of the uh, liquid iron and slag and the further processing. So, now I will come to the next topic of dissection of the live blast furnace. Whatever we have discussed till now, we uh, got most of the knowledge uh, from the dissection of live blast furnace. Before that, uh, the blast furnace used to be considered as black box. Um, so, the used to be considered block black box because it is all enclosed and it is very hot inside, one cannot see anything what is happening, it is just a speculation ok this is the thing which could happen a cold model study or like that and nobody was sure what is happening inside of it, how the various section look like, we say the cohesive zone, we say the middle zone, we say the stake region, um, then uh, we say about the tier region. But what is happening there um, really nobody knew about it. So, till the dissection of live blast furnace came. So, people especially in Japan and USA, USA in fact it probably the first one who put it and then Japan actually started that. Uh, they quench the blast furnace, the live blast furnace, the operating blast furnace. And, uh, the quench is using uh, water or nitrogen um, from the top and then they dissected it, opened it and this is the, these are the actual operating blast furnace. And in Japan many blast furnace almost 10 to 12 blast furnace in one go they did it. And the next few slides will show you some important findings what they have obtained from this and you would be amazed to look at the uh, different region which they have got it. And this all study is uh, about 3 to 4 decades old and the blast furnace since then has improved a lot and that is what we discussed in the previous slides about the modern blast furnace. But before that what was the status of the uh, inside the status of the blast furnace you can see in these figures. So, this is the inside arrangement of dissected 
blast furnace as you will see this is the hero uh, hero hata blast furnace this is kukaika blast furnace of japan and these are different different blast furnace i am not going into the detail of these uh, operation but because they were operating with a different raw material different operating condition different uh, flow rate or uh, blast rate and different conditions which of course can be seen in the literature one can read those but what it is pointing out see when they operate in a different way the cohesive zone this is actually a cohesive zone which is like a semi fused iron and slag and coke layer um, and here this is the cohesive zone a very big difference between these two while this is extent up to the stake region on top of that almost and this is just below the stake region and uh, beside that you have uh, in fact the layer of this uh, fused mass which is uh, uh, like your uh, fused iron and coke that has extended till to your level in this one while this is quite a way which normally ideally we expected. So, and this is due to the irregularities and this furnace is not operating in a proper way you can see also escape hole in this. So, this is clearly showing the furnace is not operating um, with 100 percent efficiency in a good form and you are getting various uh, things in the furnace over here in comparison to this. And but this shows the arrangement how it is coming at you look at closely as you can see the few, this is actually the ore uh, raw material which could be sinter pellets or iron or flux and this region the white one is coke. So, alternative layers they are coming and you can see these are getting fused and narrow and narrow the layers of uh, uh, raw material except the coke and when it reaches to this uh, high temperature zone um, your ore becomes a semi molten in the region or mussy zone what you call it, but um, this white zone the coke retains its uh, structure. So, most of the gases then passes through this because they cannot pass through the mussy zone due to very high resistance. So, this there is a permeability issue here. So, structure of cohesive zone is very important because this is the one which is letting air go out uh, into the other zone and the reducing zone. So, that is why cohesive zone is a very important one and on which it affects the permeability of the uh, bed and uh, further reduction in the upper zone. Um, so, this clearly shows uh, how they are arranged in this way escape holding and other thing. If you look at uh, the um, this figure you can see also it changes the cohesive zone nature is changing this is um, 1 to your number, but it is about 14 centimeter in diameter this is 12 centimeter diameter. So, how the diameter is affecting the cohesive zone and how this layer structure is taking place similarly you can see in this one in in this one in fact there was no gas through one to here. So, this is a unused. So, your all fused mass has come up to here. <coughs> so, there is no um, uh, direct melting has occurred it has come till to your region and to your region is really um, in the heart. So, you can see it quite a lot FEO is directly entering into the heart region. Um, this is 70 or uh, 7 centimeter diameter tube and that is how the so this is our softening zone and various zones are there. So, this gives a very good idea how uh, inside of the platform it look like uh, when you quench it and dissect it and based on that many study have been taken place and it has been improved and that is how the modern blast furnace look now. This uh, 
um, again about the uh, dissection of that blast furnace and when they look at the raceway region because that is a very important region on which the whole reduction permeability aerodynamics of the blast furnace depend. So, you can see when gas is injected the immediately in front of the tube uh, there is a region where there is no coke it is a cavity what we call raceway then you have a different different type of coke. So, just after that there is a high large brown brown disc coke you get it and this this is a sort of a racing around that and that is how the name is raceway. And then you have a finer coke actually finer and dense coke. So, permeability is less there. So, somehow one has to get rid of that and this also later on extend to for the dead man this actually region is a dead man. And then you have a other um, different types of coke angular large brown coke and then brown dark coke. And if you look at the top view of that you can see the oxygen level is almost by middle of the raceway 0 oxygen. So, all oxidation reduction has occurred by this. So, this is the one which is oxidized region and after that reducing gases start. So, C, CO2 form uh, react with carbon and CO started forming and front of that uh, raceway you have a more higher uh, size coke and side of it because lots of uh, abrasion and uh, other thing is occurring via. So, fines are generated which get deposited further down on that one. So, this is a typical stage of the uh, blast furnace raceway um, of the quenched one and this is again I would say 4 decade old and many things have changed. So, lots of uh, attention is paid now on the coke quality due to this because you do not want lots of uh, disintegration and generation of fines and other things should occur. So, quite a bit research has gone and not only this similarly about maintaining this structure so about the raw material preparation about the coke preparation these are very important for a smooth functioning of the blast furnace. This uh, gives an uh, again uh, idea again from a dissected blast furnace the change in the composition of metal uh, uh, droplet of metal and slag. So, these are sort of a sampling position from where they picked up the um, uh, metal and slag droplets and as you can see this is actually the sort of tear region. So, temperature is high in this region. So, carbon pick up by um, slag and metal is very high. So, it is a that is how you say the carburization of the carbon occurs here. So, which uh, goes 4 percent or more. So, liquid metal always has carbon 4 to 4.5 percent. Similarly, the silicon pickup are uh, this a bit erratic, but mostly silicon pickup is occurring uh, becoming quite high in this uh, uh, two year and above in the Bose region and belly region because this paper goes up and uh, absorbed by the um, droplets of metal and slag and silicon level increases in that one. So, you can see silicon level can go up to 3 percent that is very high. So, you need a desiliconization. Sulphur pickup of course, depending on the temperature and um, basicity and other thing of the slag, uh, this sulphur content decreases as it goes near the uh, hearth or tapping side. Um, it continuously decreases. Of course, the manganese pickup is high, it, uh, uh, especially by the metal. So, manganese goes mostly into the metal. Um, so, these are all samples which were taken out at various places in the blast one is the uh, operating one and that shows the composition of all these uh, uh, important element which are there in the metal and slag. 
uh, and this gives an idea that how the situation uh, prevails in the blast furnace inside the blast furnace and how one can improve it. Nowadays in fact you will not find the silicon percentage of that high. This is again as I said all four decade old uh, minimum four decade old uh, dissection um, study. So, many improvement have occurred and silicon goes uh, very low now uh, with the preparation of proper raw, ma uh, raw material and temperature and other thing. Uh, now, it can go uh, easily 0.5 percent or so. So, finding from this dissected blast furnace, generally the ore layers and coke layers keep their edge charge stratification well in descending to the melting zone which we have seen it they are in the layer form and the descent maintaining that one. The lower part of the furnace where 3 or 4 or layers are softened and fused together before melting. So, there it can thin down and they fuse together and the other important feature the top part where the layering is determined by charging method burden material and size distribution. The lumpy zone where the individual particles of or do not as that get fused together and the coke and all layer make an orderly descent as stratified. So, as long as they are not uh, uh, fused and temperature is not very high in a very uh, orderly manner they descend into the lower portion. So, it does not pose that much problem to the permeability of the blast furnace and further reduction of the charge. The layer thickness decreases uh, while the angle of inclusion is also decreased as the burden descent. I think this you might have noticed this uh, <coughs> that you can see how we get the inclination angle in the starting of the layer, but it, it comes down this decreases and of course, the thickness is also decreasing of the layers. Uh, so, that is uh, about the point which I uh, say the co cohesion zone is nothing the cohesive zone where semi fusion uh, molten metal is there material where the ore is softened fused and eventually melted is formed by the descending ore in accordance with the state of the gas flow that is in turn determined by the burden distribution and the position of the tube. As we saw uh, about the position of the tube, the operation of the tube has a pro profound effect on this softening uh, of the material. The coke zone which is situated beneath the cohesive zone and ever the core or the conical deposit of the coke known as dead man serving as the coke supply source for the combustion zone. <coughs> so, this dead man is a very important uh, uh, if you look at the Okay, we have a raceway. So, and then we have a one cork conical shape which is just uh, sitting over there extending up to the heart and th that is called the dead man because it does not take part as such in any chemical reaction or other thing. However, it gives the mechanical support uh, to the uh, whole burden. So, that is very important Important, and not only that it also provides the permeability. So, all uh, molten material is percolate through that and it also supplies the coke for combustion. So, that dead man is a very important part of the blast furnace. So, that it is about that which we are talking it. So, the combustion zone is a zone of coke burning in and around the raceway in a swirling motion. The coke in the core which is a deposit of coke in the conical shape is found in the lower part of the coke zone is being held up for long time. So, this actually gets uh, the coke in the uh, um, dead man zone it is uh, like a, a 14 days to 18 days or more it would be sitting there before it is replenished or replaced by the uh, other coke. So, residence time is very long in, uh, of the coke in the dead man. 
The melt bath which is composed of slag layer on the top of the metal layer is filled up with coke which is often much coagulated near the bottom and the bath itself fills the space between the lower portion of the core and the heart. So, essentially um, all the slag and uh, iron is sitting in between the holes of the dead man and when the um, metal uh, production is more and sometimes lots of metal is there uh, in the heart, this uh, dead man um, floats on the uh, liquid iron because liquid iron density is about 7000 um, kg per meter cube and the coke density you know it is very low about 800 uh, or so or in, in, in fact with the bulk density could go up to 5 600. So, it floats uh, uh, on the liquid metal, but not exactly when you start taking out the liquid metal it sinks down. So, all the liquid metal and uh, slag it is uh, sitting within the pores of the de dead man and then you drain it out. So, it, it acts like a strainer for this uh, um, metal and slag. 